We will place the Maguire land here. Join the team. Hey team, it's McGuire Review, and we're going to take a look at Pandasaurus's new game. It's a fairly new game called Beacon Patrol. Now, I did pre-order this and picked it up at Gen Con. Just got back from Gen Con 2023. We just dropped a video on that if you want to check that out. If you are interested in Gen Con and want to know what that brings, uh, you can find some cool stuff in that video. However, for this video, it's all about Beacon Patrol. And before we even get started off, we'll hit... The stats here on this one, it's a one to four players. So again, one to four players. This game is fully uh, soloable. It is set up to be a solo experience as well. And it is a fun solo experience. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. 30 minutes long, so you can blow through these games. They're very quick games. They're very simple. This game is incredibly simplistic. It is beer and pretzels, like I like to call some of these games. Uh, and it's a good one in that category, so I do highly recommend it. And age is 8+. I, I would say you could even get some younger than 8 in here. It's it's extremely simplistic. Okay, so before we even get started, I really like the art style in this game. So the colors are nice. It's very simple. You get your reds, your whites, your blues. Very simple uh, color scheme that you have here. The components are nice. The cost is low. Uh, it's kind of hitting all of those categories. And when you think about a game like Beacon Patrol, it, it is a very, very simple game, okay? And and some some gamers say, okay, well, I don't really want a game that's just like I play it a couple times and it's so simplistic. It's like, okay, that's all it is. I'm, I'm done. The thing with Beacon Patrol is it is one of those games that's great to have in your collection, and it will definitely stay in my collection because every board game collection needs these kind of games. It's the... You can pull it out anywhere. Uh, it's Anybody can play the game. It's a total gateway game. Even if you play with friends that have no interest in board games or all, at all that you might have in your collection, this is one of these games you can pull out and play like you'd be pulling out a deck of cards and saying, oh, let's play some cards, and anybody would want to play. It's very simple tile laying. You're all working together, so there's no competitive nature in this game either. It is a cooperative game. You are all working together around the table to essentially maximize your ship's uh, movement across this map that you're tile laying and building out. And that really is the entire game. The whole game really works around the mechanic of movement. You want to maximize the amount of movement that you can do with your ship every time it's your turn. Uh, as you go around the table, but you're all working to be able to do that. From a solo perspective, because it is a cooperative game at heart, you're just going to orchestrate that yourself. There are some rules we can we can take a look at here. If you do play solo, you will change the amount of tiles that are out in front of you. You will change the amount of movement tokens that you can get here. And there will be some things that will be a little bit different when it comes to the final scoring of the game as well if you're playing solo. Now, before we even get into the game, because this is something that I think folks like to hear kind of right up front... If you're buying this game only for a solo experience, I think that's fine. I think you're going to get to the point where you're going to kind of just max out the game and you're just going to you're going to be right within those points of kind of like maximizing your score and then that's probably when you're going to you know, you're going to walk away, you're going to put it away, maybe you get it out in the future, maybe you don't. Where I think this game really shines is with the three and four players. That's when Beacon Patrol was really fun. Yes, it's fun with two players. Again, I think it will suffer from the same thing as just that solo experience over time, where when you're playing with four, yes, all four people can get good. Yes, you, you can really maximize. It just it seems to be more fun because there's more interaction, because one of the actions that you can take is some tile swapping between players. So you're always using strategy, and you're always trying to beat the puzzle that's in front of you. So I think that three and four player design is where Beacon Patrol really, really shines, and that's when you're probably going to have the most amount of fun with it. But it's awesome that it supports just that solo play as well. You go on a trip, it's small form factor, you want to you bring it, you want to try to beat your last score, 
that's kind of fun from a from a solo perspective, and I've had a good time with that from a solo perspective as well. Now, the game does offer two mini expansions right out of the gate in the, the core retail box. You get two little mini expansions. One of them has to do with piers, uh, and then you, you, you put land around it, and if those land have houses on them, you get more points. That's how this expansion works. And then you have the windmills here, which uh, you get a point for explored windmills as well. And then you get points if you have open sea tiles. They can have buoys and whatnot in them. But if you have open sea tiles around the windmill, you get points as well. So there's different ways that those can be scored. They're right here in the book. It will show you on the back if you're using the expansions. Um, here's your rank without an expansion. If you use one of the expansions, if you use both of the expans expansions, there's different points for different type of categories, novice, sailors, captains, navigators, and cartographers. Uh, cartographers being kind of the best if you're able to get that point score or better. You've kind of maxed out the game and done as good as you can possibly do. So from a solo perspective, you may have folks that want to just nail that cartographer score for every single option that can possibly be there, then it is going to take you a bit to be able to to, to get that um, based on the, the tiles that are drawn as you play the game and exactly where you put them on the map. So that may draw you back to that solo player experience over and over. For me, I just kind of like to get into the higher ranks and then I, I feel like I've got the game and then I'm you know from a solo perspective I can kind of be done with that. So again, I still stick with my statement of I think this game really shines with that three and four player. Here is a uh, small promo expansion. I'm not sure how else you get your hands on this. Uh, I don't know if it will just come if you pre-order from their site or if you order from their site. I'm not sure. This was something they gave me when I was at Gen Con because I did order and, and, and bought it there. I got this extra little expansion and it has the rules for that. Uh, here and obviously I don't have it out. I haven't played with this one yet, but I did want to show that it does have some extra little promo expansions that you can pick up. But I thought it was cool that it came with these little expansions right in the box, and you could decide if you wanted to use them or not. All right. So when we set up the game, depending on how many players there are, and right here in the book, uh, after it goes over the rules, and, and again the rules are like doot doot, and you're done. Right? It's like it's very very simple. In here, it will tell you if you have one, two, three, or four players, how many of these tiles you will start with in front of you around the table, each player, and how many of little movement tokens you will get as a player, right? So when you do start the game, and we'll hit these to kind of go through the game because they included the awesome reference cards, which give you kind of what the turns are, and then on the other side, they give you the scoring, which is perfect. So you can hand those out and everybody can quickly look at what they can do when it's their turn, as well as the scoring as you're kind of lightly explaining the game. When you start the game, you are going to have this single tile right here, that, and it's a little bit different on the back than the rest of them look. The rest of them have kind of this little radar on the back. This one has this anchor, so you can quickly identify it. But this is kind of your main uh, starting tile. So you'll put that out on the board. Every tile does have a little arrow on it as well. And all the tiles that you lay, you want those arrows to all be going the same way. That just indicates the orientation of your map. So just make note of that when you go to set a tile. Make sure your arrows are all going the same way. It's that simple. You'll start with this. Everybody chooses a different colored ship. You'll set that ship in front of you. So let's say that I went with blue. I would set blue in front of me. This is a blank tile that was included. I don't know why I'm going to keep it. Might need that. I don't know, maybe I make my own my own tile. The Maguire Land. So let's say we were playing a four-player game. You would just take the rest of, of your tiles here, and let's say we did not have either expansion included. If you wanted to include the expansion, you just shuffle it in with all your tiles. You'd have these tiles shuffled, and you would basically just sit them like this on the table and make a stack of them, and then everybody would get two tiles. And you would reveal those. Everybody's tiles are revealed because, again, you're all working together. And you would take two of your little movement tokens, the little propellers here. Uh, once you use your movement, you flip over the token and it turns red. So you'll keep them on their blue side so they're ready to go. And everybody would essentially have, in a four-player game, this with, uh, with their color here. I took blue. Uh, this right here sitting in front of them. And that's all you would have. You would kind of remove everything else that you didn't, that you didn't need and you'd be ready to play the game. 
Uh, the turns are very simple. The first player is the person who has last visited the sea. I guess if you have two people who went on a trip at the same time, you can flip a coin, but that's how you determine first player, and then it will just kind of go around the table in, in clockwise order. So let's say I was the first player. What I would do on my turn, and it says right here the turn actions, you have a few different things you can do on your turn. One, uh, and you can do these in any order that you want, you can place a tile. Okay. Now, when you place a tile, uh, and you will start, everybody's ship will start on this center, center one here. When you place a tile, you have to place a tile that is adjacent to your ship. Okay. So you can't, if your ship is here, you can't go placing a tile way over here because somebody else's ship is over there. You have to place, when it's your turn, you have to place a tile adjacent to your ship. And adjacent is, in this game, up, down, left, right, okay? The full corner has to, be, like, it has to have a full side connected, okay? You can't do this stuff. You can't put it on the tip there. You can't place tiles diagonally. You can't move diagonally. Everything is up, down, left, right. That is what adjacency is defined as in this game. There's nothing that is diagonal, so get that. Just remove diagonal from your head. Uh, there is nothing in this game that is diagonal. When you do place a tile, there are some rules around placing the tiles. Water has to connect to water. Land has to connect to land. Okay, when you place a tile. Also, when you place a tile, that is where your boat will automatically move. So you can move forcibly by using your propellers, one of these tokens, to move. But when you place a tile, it automatically has your boat move. So if I was to place this tile here, my boat would automatically move into this little bay water area, which is a completely legal move. It's water to water. But, you know, if I was to now say, oh, land to land, so now I'm going to place this other tile right here. Technically, I can do that because it's land to land, but because boats move by water and when you place a tile, your boat moves into that area, I cannot place this tile here because this boat would have to ramp up over the land, uh, weekend at Bernie style, and then go back down into the water. So that that's not allowed. So I, I, I could not actually place that there even though it is the land-to-land -land rule. So that's important to understand as well, and that's where the trick of kind of placing these tiles comes into. So this placement wouldn't actually be great for me because now it's like, okay, I can't really do anything else. So I could place a tile there for an action, and then I'd have to move my ship and actually move forcibly move my ship back over here, and then I could place a tile... Um, here and that would be a legal movement because now it's adjacent to where i'm at uh it is water to water uh, and it does kind of continue this coastline but it's water to water and i can move through that water automatically now into this spot okay there's now nothing else i could do if it was my turn i've placed both of my tiles i can't i could technically move again if i wanted to and just move back here i don't know why i would do that i probably wouldn't do that and i would just that would be the end of my turn. The other thing that I can do on my turn if I want is I can swap a tile with another player. So let's say that um, I didn't want to actually play this tile. I know it's still here. Uh, well, I had moved back here per the use of this. Let's say I didn't want to play this tile for one reason or another, and I there was another person around the table that had a, I thought was a better tile for me to play on my turn. I could swap with them. I give them my tile. They gave me their tile. I immediately have access to this tile, and then I can I can place the and then I can place the tile. That's something else you might want to do if you get into trouble with the tiles you've drawn and they don't quite fit after you've built out this map. You're probably not going to get a lot of the swapping the first few times around the table. It's once the map really starts to get built out, you may then start to get tiles where it's like, okay, depending on where you are, you need a specific type of tile, water to water, land to land, you know, whatever. You're going to need that at navigating around with your boat. And that's when you're going to see players start to swap tiles around the table. 
And that's perfectly fine, right? It's you're all working together. The whole point of this game is to maximize the movement as you go through the map. And that's that's really what you'll find with this game. There's really only one mechanic, and it, the mechanic is movement. It's find every way you possibly can to effectively move your ship every time and place tiles every time. Because the more of these tiles you get out, and the more your ships move, the more you explore, and the higher the points you get. The other thing that you can do, and I'm not sure if it is marked on here um, or not. I don't, I don't see it on there. But the other thing that you can do is if at any point in time you have tiles left over, and you don't want to swap them, and you want to move, you can always discard a tile to get a movement. And you, I mean, you could discard both tiles or three tiles, however many tiles you have in front of you per the number of players that are playing. You can discard those tiles to get movement as well. So as you can see, pretty much everything in this game is all about providing movement. So that's why I keep reinforcing that the, the core manic mechanic of this game is just movement. So as you play the game, I'm just going to start stacking tiles out here so you can kind of see, okay, that one, all right, that'll work. It's water to water. Okay, this one right here won't work because it's land to water. And again, I can't just turn it to make it work. It has to, all the arrows have to be oriented the right way. So, you know, I could do that. I could place it there, right? That's still water to water. Continues kind of that coastline. Then we can do something like, we can do something like that. Um, because if I was in a boat, I could continue to move that way. Um, we can't do that. We can't do that, right? So that's not going to work. So maybe if that was the whole map, this would be an example of cash in for extra movement or trade with somebody around the table. Uh, we can do that. We can do that. So you can see how the map will continue to build out. And there will be times where, depending on how you lay these tiles, I'm glad this turned out this way, you might get kind of like trapped in a little like area where it's like, oh, I can't, I can't put any more because now I, I, you know, I, it's got to be water. Boats move by water, so I can't jump this landmass to go this way. I can't put it here. I can't put it here. I can't put it here, right? So now I'm gonna have to. If I went all the way down here and my boat kind of got trapped down here, I'm gonna have to start using these movement tokens on my turn and or just cashing in these tiles for extra movement so I can kind of get back out of here to an area where then now I can build out from again. So that's where you're going to find kind of the strategy in laying these tiles when you play the game. You're going to want to keep these areas open and not box yourself into some little channel or canal or you're going to be losing movement points and time in the game. Okay, when it is the end of your turn, if there are any tiles that are left in front of you and you didn't use them for extra movements because maybe it didn't benefit you, uh, you would discard them from the game. And when you discard them, you kind of set them over to the so to the to the side. Uh, any tiles that are discarded for movement are set over to the side. You would then draw back up to the limit you should have. You would turn over your little movement tokens, and it's the next person's turn. So that that's also beneficial because you draw, let's say, for our, um, I think we were doing a, a four-player game, you draw your two tiles back, you put them in front of you, they're now accessible to other players to swap when it's their turn as well. It's not like you wait until the whole round's over, then everybody draws back up. So the game keeps it moving from the perspective of always having those tiles in front of people so you have options when it's, you know, when it is your turn if what's in front of you is not the best thing uh, for you. Okay, and then the game will end once all tiles have been placed and or discarded. So once all the tiles have either ended up on the map or they ended up in the discard pile, that's when the game ends. End of game scoring is very easy. Uh, essentially, all you do is you score uh, points for different tiles depending on if they are explored. Okay, so let's say we're at the end of the game. Let's just say hypothetically this was the whole entire board for the game. There would only be one tile here that actually could score for points out of all of this. And that's this one right here. To be fully explored, you have to have a tile on all four adjacent edges to the tile that you're scoring. So this is the only one that has four tiles around it. This one has one, two, three. Oh, it's missing that one. 
This one right here has got that one. It's got that one, but it's missing these two. Here we got one, two, three. We're missing that one. So and that just happened to be how for this little quote unquote mini game, if this was the whole game, we kind of moved around until we ran out of tiles. So there was only really one tile that could be scored. And that's why it is important as you play to try to maximize filling in all these tiles the best way that you can. And that's where that mechanic of trading tiles around the table when it's your turn swapping tiles is really smart and you really want to, everybody really wants to pay attention to that and that's a great player interaction thing and it's the reason why i think the game really shines at the three and four player mark that's everything for panasaurus's brand new beacon hill awesome game great job on this one uh, and it's definitely one that will stay in the collection because i think this uh i think it's just it hits all the marks that a game like this should be hitting. With that team, keep rolling them, Crits. This has been the McGuire Review, and we'll see you next time.